It's brought it into the realm of art. It's in museums and gallery shows. You can walk in today to the Museum of Modern Art and buy an Andy Warhol skateboard. It's a million dollars worth of skateboards on eBay. In the 60s, no one really had sick graphics going on. It was really logo-based. The only art I ever saw on boards was the art that Wes Humpson was doing back in the early 70s. After you see a Wes Humpson skateboard, how could you go back to a plain skateboard? We're skating pools. It always had to have that shocker. When it flashed, you would remember it. You'd go like, whoa. Do your own graphic right now. None of the pros do their own graphics. I'm like, all right, I'll try. Neil was the first one to be like a pro skater and put his own artwork on the board. John took over the art. Instantly, Schmistics went from this selling 500 boards a month to over 5,000 boards a month. My board started selling really well, and it was pretty apparent that maybe it was the artwork that sold the board and not necessarily my name. Everyone was like, look at that, like, and he did that? I made like 200 hand-painted boards, and I thought I would be a famous artist. Of course, I was wrong. Blind was just trying to stir things up left and right. Some of the guys, you know, that weren't happy with the way things were being done. Then we went down there and it was like a playground. It wasn't, it wasn't the business. Do anything you want. This is like fun here. Nobody can stop us. Stop